1975, I, I actually started touring in 1972 with my, one of my favorite bands. I mean, I loved Elvis Presley. I loved the Beach Boys. I really fell in love with Pet Sounds, and I loved that oh, yeah. music. And I did a show at the University of New Hampshire with the Beach Boys, and Carl Wilson came to my dressing room. He was the closest to my age. He was a couple of years older than me. And he was just great. He was so positive and wonderful. We, so we became friends, actually lifelong friends. Oh, and name dropping, right? But I'm not name dropping, it's true. <laughs> um, and, oh, and I'll name drop if you want. But, <laughs> but you know, it was great. He was a great, great man. And obviously sang God Only Knows, Good Vibrations, Darling. He was one of the most gifted singers that I ever heard. I mean, an angelic voice. And uh, so I was out in California doing something in Los Angeles, a TV show. I think it was called The Midnight Special. You probably don't remember that. Oh, hey, well, I got right there. Wolfman Jack. A lovely piece of work. I love him. But anyway, uh, Carl invited me to his house in Beverly Hills. Now, I was living at that time. I you know, had an apartment in Queens. You know, you know, I mean, everyone, every girl I ever dated sounded like the nanny. But, so Carl had this beautiful house right in Coldwater Canyon, right down the street from the Beverly Hills Hotel. And so he had this beautiful spread laid out for lunch. But I'll never know what it tasted like. Uh, because before I could get a bite, his two giant husky dogs <laughs> jumped up, knocked the table over, ate everything. And, oh my God. And, and he was so nice, he couldn't stop apologizing. I said, Carl, don't worry about it. I have a crazy Irish setter at home called Shannon, and I've seen this performance many times. Now, as soon as I said that, he got very quiet, and he said in that inimit inimitable California accent of his, he said, you know, Henry, I had a dog named Shannon that I loved very much. It was hit by a car and killed a month ago. Oh, no. Wow. That, I felt like telling him jokes after that. <laughs> so anyway, we had a lovely day. And I, when I got back to, to Queens, <laughs> I was sitting on the bed with my Shannon thinking about Carl when I drifted off and wrote this song that became a, you know, a multi-million seller around the world in 1976. Wow. Now, the funny thing about it is that I grew up in Brooklyn. Yeah, you, oh, you got a problem with that? <laughs> so I grew, I grew up in Brooklyn, and, and no one, I never talk about this, but... When Shannon was a big hit, the borough of Brooklyn wanted to give me a key to the city. But I turned them down. I didn't need another coat hanger. But anyway, I digress. I thought I'd put a little smile on it because it's a sad song. And here it is, and I hope you love it. And if you don't understand dog songs, the reason I thought it was okay, so many people say, it's a song about a dead dog. Yeah, it's a song about a dead dog. Did you ever lose one? It's horrible. So, but the reason I thought it was okay to do it, it was Elvis Presley's fault, because on his second album, Elvis Presley, <laughs> at the name, he sang Old Shep, the old Red Foley country song from 1947 about him, his dog dying. And when I heard Elvis sing that, I was crying my eyes out. And so I thought, yeah, it's okay to write a dog song, so. See? All this credit.
so much. I'm going to see you one more.